The only aspect of the registration which for me I would say is useful is that it puts to bed a lot of the issues that were raised by the government and the EC when they wanted to embark upon this. One, the major issue, even when they were in opposition to come in, was that this, as you have indicated, this register was bloated. Quite clearly, that cannot be the case. The numbers that have registered demonstrate clearly that actually it was a credible register on the face of it even with the number of people who are supposed to have passed and therefore it's a myth based on no scientific evidence except rumor and innuendo that has led to us embarking upon a very expensive process you add COVID on top of it, and you ask yourself, why did we put the cart before the horse? And what do I mean? You ask a simple question. For you to embark upon a good registration, you should have done a census. The census was due this year. You had an existing register. COVID was in the air. Put aside the other arguments that existed before that. What you do is you say, let's manage with a register that we did, we managed with in December for district assembly election. Let's use that register. You had machinery that had a 10-year lifespan from 2012, which means even if you wanted to say they were obsolete, they would be valid to 2022. Mm. So technically, you had equipment that you'd spend some money on to upgrade, use the old register, don't put us in the way, harm's way in terms of illnesses, get uh, the census done next year, because technically, doing a census also raises issues of COVID. Do it next year. Get the Ghana card issue dealt with in a systematic way that didn't raise issues of COVID. You would have now a document that could have actually stood the test of time so that this vouching issue would not be the norm, would actually become the exception. This is proper planning and thinking. Here we are today.